it was a straight man who was offering to carry my groceries out, mm-hmm. right? So when he's offering to carry my groceries, he's actually offering to give himself the opportunity to take a break from a somewhat rem- repetitive job, get some fresh air, and maybe chat with somebody mm-hmm. that he doesn't know, like chat with a new girl on his way out to the car. And then he gets to have that experience. I get to not carry the bags. <laughs> Win-win. <laughs> Everybody's winning. But my because my initial instinct for so long was, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a burden. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even able to conceive of what was actually going on and yeah. what could be created if I said yes to that. So do you think in that scenario um, of somebody carrying your bags for you or, or any version of... Uh, and we're going to use man versus woman here just for, for the sake of this particular curiosity. Um, we, you and I are saying, I don't want to be a burden. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't, I'll do it myself. And then we're resentful because we're doing it ourselves. <laughs> um, do you think, and this is the difference between men and women, obviously I'm not very good at this part. Um, what's going through the man's head? Is it as simple as I just want to do something nice? Um, and then when I say no, he really is thinking, oh, I just, you know, I didn't like, I guess maybe I don't even know what he's thinking at this point. I think that where I'm going with this is that we tend to overthink women as in generally speaking, this is a general statement, but we're thinking all of the things, you know, we say no, not because we're just saying no, but we say no, because like, no, I'm empowered. I can do it. I always have to do it. And then there's like 40 other thoughts that go through it. Are men really just like, I just want to do something nice for you. Like, whatever. (laughs) Is it that simple? Um, I really think it is that simple. Yeah. Men are providers. If you think of the, our older evolutionary psychology, look at us as hunters and gatherers, right? That the masculine energy, Mm -hmm. whether we're just for the sake of this, we're saying men and women, but we all have masculine and feminine energies in us. Right. But the masculine energy is the hunting energy. It's focused I'm going to go and I'm going to get this thing and I'm going to bring it home. I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot the deer. I'm going to bring it home and I'm going to provide it to my family or my Mm -hmm. tribe tribe for sustenance. And he doesn't feel resentful about that later. Like we do when we're saying no, and then we really wanted it to happen. I mean, that's another conversation, right? Because the challenge of giving more than our, we really have capacity to is not, limited to just women or just men. That's something that's a, it's a human challenge. Yeah. And so if he is not tuned in to his own boundaries, and this is actually can make it even more challenging for men to be tuned into their own boundaries because there is this very strong urge to provide. Yeah. And those things can exist simultaneously. I genuinely want to provide for you, especially if you're the woman that I love and I genuinely want to make you happy. And so I might not be super aware of where the line is for me personally, of where that turns into I'm giving, I'm, you're loving it. And then, oh, now I'm depleted. So, you know, I hesitate to say that because of the conversation you and I were having about this consciousness of being a burden. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we have to be able to trust each other to hold our own boundaries. Right. And really what I found with my friends, with my lovers, is that when we do something for each other, when we ask for help or when we allow help, when we allow ourselves to receive, that is an opportunity for connection and intimacy. Totally. You know, it's so I read and correct me if I'm wrong, but you did a lot of work in this area with men first, right? Mm -hmm. You, um, so you worked with men on dating and relationships and that type of thing. So that informs, I feel like that brings a whole nother level of, um, expertise because now when you're working with women, you have a perspective that maybe somebody who hadn't worked with men has, um, and actually, as you were, we were just talking about this and I was like, oh, I have a question. And I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to let it go because I want to listen to what she's saying. Um, I, I have just recently sat down and watched reruns of a show called Private Practice. I don't know if you're um, if you even remember the show, but it was a spinoff from <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. And I'm not super proud that I'm even saying that I'm binge watching. <laughs> but there's a character toward the end of the series who is very gentlemanly. He's um, he, he's 
he's kind of old school. You can tell that his his family was a very traditional, um, most likely not American family. Um, and he's got all these beautiful qualities of wanting to provide for whoever he's interested in, you know, and he wants to open the door and he wants to carry the things and he, he's that person. And I'm watching literally with like stars in my eyes, like, when am I going to meet this person? Knowing that I probably have met this person a bajillion times and I keep telling him, no, I don't need your help or, or that type of thing. And so now in dating in general, and, and I, I realized that because of like because of my age, maybe there's a whole other layer to this, but I'm a single woman. Um, I don't know where the fuck to meet anybody. I don't know when I have time to meet somebody. I know that I want somebody in my life. I know now I'm very, very clear for the first time in my life, how important and what type of partner is important to me, which is great. That's great growth. Um, now I'm stuck. Right. But in any case, I, I don't know how to date. I don't know how to date. I don't know if now is it, are we in the phase of dating in which I'm like, I should just let the guy do everything or expect him to do everything. Not everything, but you know, the opening the door and paying for the dinner and carrying the groceries, or are we still in the, let's don't make him feel like you have to, he has to do everything (laughs) or I, I, it's so confusing. It's so confusing now over generations. it, It went from, the man is the provider, and even in the first date, he's taking care of, he's making all the plans, he's buying the dinner, he's taking you to the movie or whatever, to now, then the women were like, nope, I can do it myself, like we can split the check and we can do all that. But you and I are having this conversation of how important it is to allow people to give and receive. What What is it that people want now? What is it that men want now? What do they expect um, in dating now? So here's my question for you. Oh, Jesus. Yes, bring it. What do you want? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, generally speaking, having a relationship with a person in which we both feel generous and we both appreciate receiving. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a trust there, which for me is going to be a very big like hurdle. And I... I have to like apologize to any man who ever comes into my life from now on (laughs) because that's a lot of work I have to do to be able to have that trusting feeling. But I believe that there's, um, a relationship of, you know, of give and take. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm a person who takes control Mm -hmm. naturally. Like these dating apps suck ass if you ask me, because I I don't want to sit and, and like wait, for the person to, you know, he's obviously interested if he's texting me back and forth or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Fucking ask me out. And if you're not going to ask me out in the next like three texts, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And then I get labeled as the person who's intimidating or whatever, cause she's taking control and I don't know what to do anymore. But generally speaking, I don't want to have to do all the work, even though that's what I've been doing and I do it naturally. Totally. So to break it down even a little bit more tangibly for our listeners, we were talking specifically about the very early stages of dating. And you mentioned the dating app and the texting. Mm-hmm. So if you tune into your ideal scenario, what would it look like? Let's just let's talk first date. Who would ask who out? Who would plan? Well, ideally it wouldn't be on an app to begin with. Totally. <laughs> like, I mean, I would be happy to, I'm very social and I have friends who laugh because I can go and I can talk to anybody and I can feel very comfortable. And it doesn't always have to mean that I'm interested in going on a date with a person, but, um, but it would be great to walk into a public space or be a, you know, in a, in a group of people in which I meet somebody and there's a conversation for me when there's a connection, you know, it pretty quickly. It doesn't always have to be like super sexual, but if there's any sort of connection in which you can carry on to maybe connect even deeper, you know that pretty quickly. So I would say the first thing that's going to happen is that I'm going to meet somebody and there's going to be a connection within, I mean, 10 minutes is long for me, but that's going to happen. Um, And then that person is going to be interested enough to ask me out. Yeah, that's your ideal scenario. Totally. Yeah. And how much time are you willing to give him to ask you out? Um, I mean, he doesn't have to ask me out in the first 10 minutes, but he certainly doesn't need to walk away. Like there has to be 
in the first 10 minutes, there's a connection within that meeting. So I don't know if we're in a party or if we're in a bar or wherever, but before we leave, before we leave the space separately, Mm -hmm. I need to know that there's going to be another opportunity to connect with this person. It doesn't have to be like he has to ask me out on a date that first time, but I'm, I'm not going to wait. I don't want to waste my time any further. If he didn't feel a connection, I totally get that. Just cut it off right there. Um, otherwise I want to know right away that there's going to be another opportunity. Yeah. So the reason I'm asking is because I really believe that dating has changed a lot, (laughs) right? So if you think about the primal days when we lived in a tribe, our options were very few right now. There's almost a problem of decision fatigue, right? There's something happens in the brain and I forget the psychological term for it, but when we have too many options, it's very difficult for humans. So I really look at dating as a game of efficient filtering. Yeah. So one of the the posts I put up recently was actually from Gabrielle Bernstein, who is a life coach. And she has this concept around what if rejection is protection? Mm -hmm. Rejection is one of the most difficult things when we're dating. And The pain of rejection motivates us to try to be likable to everybody. That's very inefficient. (laughs) It's true, actually. It can make dating feel impossible. So what if rejection is protection is what if we get really clear on what feels in alignment for us? Because I genuinely believe that that's different. And so I don't want to tell you what to do because I really believe that if you are clear on what it is that you want and you trust that somebody will arrive and engage with you in that way, you will naturally not engage with the people who don't engage with you in that way. And that could feel like rejection. Right. Actually, it's protection from the kind of relationship you don't want. Yes. And logically, my brain is also like, you know, give give somebody a chance because... He could be also feeling like, oh, I'm afraid because Mm -hmm. I don't want to be rejected. Totally. Um, You just mentioned Gabrielle Bernstein. So I told you earlier that I've been on this recent journey and um, I've read most of her books. Um, This latest book that she's released, Super Attractor, is the one that it just came to me at the right moment in the right, like I was just in the right mindset to dive into this journey of of attracting and and manifesting and just, I have read the book probably three times. I have it on audio, like on repeat. Um, I go to the meditations. This is the thing that I seek out like daily. Um, And he literally just was listening to another section yesterday about the rejection is protection. Um, And I've heard this book like now four or five times read it. The first time I, I was like, Oh, interesting. That's a whole, like, that's so, so good. And then today I went on your Instagram and I saw, and I was like, Oh, this is a sign. (laughs) Um, well, that's a good point that you make. I think generally speaking, I joke around about my dating life and how sucky it is. And, and I, I haven't really been committed to it, to be honest. I have a great life. I have two children. I have a business. Um, I have the podcast. I have a lot of really good stuff. I have just honed in on to a piece of my life that I feel like I, I am, I want to, I don't want to say missing cause I don't generally feel like I'm missing anything, but I am craving a person, um, to share experiences with and that type of thing. And I think my version of partnership probably looks a little bit different than what's traditional. Um, but you bring up a great point about knowing what it is that you want. Um, that's where the frustration comes in for people, I think, because when you figure out what it is you want, it's torture to be patient, to wait for it to happen, which is where I'm at in the, in the dating. It's like, I hate dating apps. Sometimes I go on there, I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I totally know what I want. And then I get like frustrated and I'm like, okay, I'm off like in two days. Um, or you live in a town like Petaluma where there's the dating pool is pretty minimal. Um, especially when you know half of the town, <laughs> so yeah. it's like you're either, you know, everybody or you're worried that somebody that, you know, is going to see you trying to go on a first date or something. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the idea of just waiting for it to fall into my 
space. I don't, I don't know if I have faith in that. 